you are about to hear excerpts from Napoleon Hill's Magic Ladder to Success. Though everything in this book may not be true, one thing is for certain. The real value of this book is not in its own pages, but in your own reaction to what you read. The main purpose of the Law of Success philosophy is to stimulate the imaginative faculties of the brain so they will readily create new and usable ideas for any emergency in life. And anyone who can create great ideas, as readers of this book tend to do, will gather great power. Be ready, as millions before you will testify. This book will cause important ideas to flash into your mind. So have a utensil and paper ready or another recording device. Without further ado, we begin part five of Napoleon Hill's Magic Ladder to Success. The Mind and Money. That mind chemistry may be appropriately applied to the workday affairs of the economic and commercial world is a demonstrable fact. Through the blending of two or more minds in a spirit of perfect harmony, the principle of mind chemistry may be made to develop sufficient power to enable the individuals whose minds have been thus blended to perform seemingly superhuman feats. Power is the force with which men achieve success in any undertaking. Power in unlimited quantities may be enjoyed by any group of people. These people must, however, be wise enough to submerge their own personalities and their own immediate individual interests in order to blend their minds in a spirit of perfect harmony. Observe the frequency with which the word harmony appears throughout this introduction. There can be no development of a mastermind where this element of perfect harmony does not exist. The individual units of one mind will not blend with the individual units of another mind until the two minds have been aroused and warmed, as it were, by a perfect harmony of purpose. The moment two minds begin to take divergent roads of interest, the individual units of each mind separate, and the third element known as the mastermind, that grew out of the friendly or harmonious alliance, will disintegrate. We come now to the study of some well-known people who have accumulated great power, also great fortunes, through the application of the mastermind. Let us begin with three of history's greatest men known to be men of great achievement in their respective fields of business and professional endeavor. Their names are Henry Ford, Thomas A. Edison, and Harvey Firestone. In his time, Henry Ford was the most financially powerful of the three. I will go further and say that many who studied Ford believed him to be the most powerful man who lived at the time. As far as is known, Ford is the only man who ever lived with sufficient power to outwit the money trust of the United States. It was said at the time that Ford gathered large amounts of money as a child gathered sand on a beach, easier than most people's ability to raise a month's rent. People marveled at his ability to send out a call and raise a billion dollars within a week. Edison, as everyone knows, was a philosopher scientist, and inventor. He was also perhaps the keenest Bible student on earth, nature's Bible, that is. He harnessed and combined Mother Nature's wisdom for the good of mankind, more than any person now living or who ever lived. It was he who brought together the point of a needle and a piece of revolving wax in such a way that the vibration of the human voice was first recorded and reproduced. It was Edison who first harnessed the lightning and made it serve as a light for man's use through the aid of the incandescent electric light bulb. It was Edison who gave the world the motion picture. These are but a few of his outstanding achievements. These modern miracles, performed in the bright light of science, transcend all the miracles described by Jules Verne and others in books of fiction at the time. Firestone 
who is the moving spirit of the great Firestone Tire Company, whose industrial achievements in the automotive industry are legendary. All three men began their careers, business and professional, without capital, and with but little schooling of what type usually referred to as education. And all three ended their lives and careers as well-educated people. All three were enormously wealthy and powerful. Now let us inquire into the source of their wealth and power. Thus far, we have been dealing only with effect whereas the true philosopher wishes to understand the cause of a given effect. Ford, Edison, and Firestone were close, personal friends for many years. Early in their careers, they were in the habit of going away to the woods once a year for a period of rest, meditation, and recuperation. Perhaps not even the great men themselves realized that their minds had become blended during those periods of retreat to a master mind that was the real source of each man's individual power. This mass mind, a product of the coordinated individual minds of Ford, Edison, and Firestone, enabled these men to tune in to forces and sources of knowledge with which most people are totally unfamiliar. If there is doubt about either the principle or the effects here described, let the student remember that more than half the theory here set forth is based on known facts. For example, it is known that these three men wielded great power. It is known that they were extremely wealthy. It is known that they began without capital and with little schooling. It is known that they formed periodic mind contacts. It is known that they were harmonious and friendly. It is known that their achievements were so outstanding as to make it impossible to compare them with those of their peers. All these facts are known to practically every school child in the civilized world. Of this, there can be no dispute. There is another major fact connected with the cause of the achievement of Edison, Ford, and Firestone, of which we may be sure. These achievements are in no way based upon trickery, deceit, or any other form of unnatural law. Neither did these men possess secret knowledge of any particular magic. They worked with natural laws that, for the most part, are well known to all economists and leaders in the field of science, with the possible exception of the law upon which chemistry of the mind is based. Though more study of the power of the mind goes on every year, it's not officially a science in the traditional sense. The mastermind intuitively used to such advantage by Ford, Firestone, and Edison may be created by any group of people who will coordinate their minds in a spirit of perfect harmony. The group may consist of any number from two upward. Best results appear available from the blending of six or seven minds. It has been suggested that Jesus Christ discovered how to make use of the principle of mind chemistry and that his seemingly miraculous performances grew out of the power he developed through the blending of the minds of his twelve disciples. It has been pointed out that when one of the disciples broke faith, Judas Iscariot, the master mind immediately disintegrated and seen in limited human terms, Jesus then met with the supreme catastrophe of his life. When two or more people harmonize their minds and produce the effect known as a master mind, each person in the group becomes vested with the power to contact with and gather knowledge through the subconscious minds of all the other members of the group. This power becomes immediately noticeable, having the effect of stimulating the mind to a higher rate of vibration, and otherwise evidencing itself in the form of a more vivid imagination and the consciousness of what appears to be a sixth sense. It is through this sixth sense that new ideas will flash into the mind. These ideas take on the nature and form of the subject dominating the mind of the individual. If the entire group has met for the purpose of discussing a given subject, 
ideas concerning that subject will come pouring into the minds of all present as if an outside influence were dictating them. The minds of those participating in the mastermind become as magnets, attracting ideas and thought stimuli of the most highly organized and practical nature from no one knows where. Hey, Tommy here. I think the most important part about this section of Napoleon Hill's Magic Ladder to Success is definitely the emphasis on the creation of the mastermind and the flashing into one's mind principle. Uh, Because what's really cool with that is that basically, as I mentioned before, each audio, each video, ideas will flash into your mind. And that is because over time, intentionally, this book and the intention of Napoleon Hill's book has created so much consciousness behind it, as I believe, that it is almost as if you're melding into the minds of the people, not just Napoleon Hill who has written it, but who he's written about, and the other people that have read it and received from it. It's almost like when they have an idea, they place it into the book as well. And I think that's incredible. Uh, Additionally, intention is very important. As it says at the end of the part, uh, when this group of people, when these group of people come together as one with a specific purpose or setting that intention, it's almost as if those ideas just flow in much quicker and uh, with greater abundance, as if he says it. So definitely take this stuff uh, to heart take action on it, especially if you have an idea, write it down or take action on it right away. Start a mastermind group, to be fair. It's a great idea. Uh, Besides that, I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed part five and feel free to continue on to uh, part six of Magic Ladder to Success, which will be probably here or here. And then one of the others will be a suggested uh, video, possibly on universal laws. Let's continue on to the next part.